Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an inspiration. I am subscribed to uh, KL or Secret Life of Bio Nerd. However far back, if you are a fan that you know her, know her of by which name. Um, but she recently had a kid and I was watching this video she had about her pregnancy story. And she was like, well, why don't you share? So that made me think about my pregnancy story which I'm going to give right now. I think it's, I'll, I'll call it a pessimist guide to pregnancy because I'm not saying I'm the most negative person, but I always found this to be funny. And I did always have this in the back of my mind to do a story time about my pregnancies. And I'll try my best to keep it under 20 minutes for God, for God's sakes. I will try my best. But I, you know, I always see these videos, and they're mostly celebrities, and I know they're blowing smoke up my ass or anybody's ass. Oh, when when you're pregnant, you're you're glowing and you're and you're no. I hate being pregnant, and the fact that I can't have kids anymore gives me some relief to my anxiety about being pregnant, uh, because I can't anymore, apart from an ectopic pregnancy. Let's knock on wood, I never get one of those. I was a young, young mother. Um, I wasn't that far out of high school when I had my first son. I got pregnant when I was 19. Um, and if you're wondering, my husband's the father of all my children, so yeah. Um, I was 19, I was in college, had a job, my apartment, my boyfriend, husband, whatever you call him back then or whatever. My future husband, there you go. Um, I got pregnant. And I will say for both pregnancies, <laughs> in my case, and that's, this also goes back to like those Facebook videos of like the montages of like people telling their families in really cute ways that they're gonna have a baby and the grandparents, or they're, like everyone's just crying. Like when I get pregnant, no one gives a shit. <laughs> Honest to God. Or they're not that enthusiastic. They're just kind of like, that's swell. Um, so yeah, when I was 19, obviously my mother did not want that for me, but I will say I made it out of high school not pregnant, so I guess I kind of won there in a sense. Um, I told my mother and my stepfather, I remember they were painting the bathroom in their room and they were shocked and my mother was crying. She was so upset, uh, but in the end they congratulated us, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, my husband's parents obviously were shocked. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but with us, they were, they were very loving and very welcoming and forgiving. And, and that was nice. I wasn't met with tears or anger on their end. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know what to expect. I gained a shitload of weight with my first son. I had always been a stick up until that point. I ate whatever I want and I just burned it like that. Um, and then when I got pregnant with my first son, it completely reconfigured my whole metabolism and I gained like 30 pounds um, and I, I never got back down on my pre-pregnancy weight or even, even maybe I got at my lowest, I got within 15 pounds of my pre-pregnancy weight, but that was very, very short lived. Um, and then, you know, when I had my first son, I was like a week over 40 weeks because you're supposed to have your baby around 39, 40 weeks when you're pregnant. And I was like a week over. And I'm, I remember being like, oh my God, like I just, I just don't want to be pregnant anymore. It was awful. I, everything swells when you're pregnant, your feet swell. I got fatter. Um, the clothes just didn't fit me anymore. Um, you just I'm just bloated. I was always flushed. I had like this pregnancy rosacea on my cheeks. My skin went to hell. Um, like it was, I was just bloated. You know, your nose gets a lot during your pregnancy for some for some reason. Your feet and your nose really swell a lot for the majority. Now, of course, there's some women who are like unicorns, and nothing bad happens to them ever. Um, I was when I was pregnant. I was also very very obsessed with watching 
um, at the time when I was living in my apartment, oh, I would watch some show on, on Discovery Channel and it was a pregnancy mo modeling agency that only dealt with pregnancy women. I, I forgot what it was called, but I would watch this show religiously because they would show it like every day, like an hour episode. I really don't know if they were reruns or not, but I watched that show obsessively every single day before I went to work. Um, so I mean like, I was always confused, like, why am I not perfect like these pregnant models <laughs> in this show? I mean, they didn't have stretch marks. Uh, I mean, literally, like, my my body was just completely, it, it changed into something else, you know what I mean? Um, and then, I was, I was a week over my 40 weeks, and then I went in for my, mind you, up until that, nothing fit me. I was as big as a duplex with my first child. I would go to work, I would wear extra large t-shirts, sweatpants, I would have my, my chanclas, my, my flip flops on because my feet didn't fit in my shoes anymore. I looked like a hot mess. I mean, worse than I am right now. I mean, I'm about to go to bed, but <laughs> I was doing my nails too. But like, I just looked like a hot mess. And I remember I had an appointment that week after I'm over 40 weeks and I'm like, um, I really hope to God I have a baby today because I don't think I can take being pregnant one more fucking day. You know what I mean? I just, I, I never was a comfortable and people say, Oh, you're glowing. I'd be like, Oh God, <sighs> I'm such a bitch. I felt horrible. I'm sorry. That's honest to God truth. I am fucking glowing. What is glowing? I, I don't even know what that means. Um, so yeah, I finally, my doctor gave me the examine examination he's like hey congratulations you're like one centimeter dilated i was like oh my god thank you so much what happens next i was like do i go home and then come back in a while he's like no 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 no. um i think it was a friday i think uh when i had that examination he's like no no um i've had a few of you girls today we'll round you all up and uh, we'll have some babies tomorrow <laughs> and i was like wow i feel like cattle um, and then I got to the hospital. I told my mom, you know, hey, everybody, it's time. They put me, th this is what my doctor did. He literally rounded up a bunch of us patients at the hospital. He put us all on Pitocin, I guess those of us who weren't high risk or needed cesareans. Put us all on Pitocin. Um, I was like strapped to my bed, you know, I had the monitor. See, and like, I would watch all these pregnancy videos up until that time and I was like, I had my little bag ready. I was like, I don't want drugs. I wanna have this baby. I wanna manage my pain. I wanna rock, walk around. I'm gonna be a rock star doing this. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna handle it. Well, I mean, when they put you on Pitocin, they put the, the monitor on your stomach, you're strapped to the, the, the drip and the thing. And I was like, can I walk around? They're like, no, no, you need to stay in bed. I was like, are you serious? I can't walk around and manage my pain. No, 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 no. Do you need do you need something like drugs or something? I was like, nah, I'm fucking fine. So like, I think my delivery overall was like 20 something hours. Um, at one point I was just getting, I, was, I wasn't really responding to Pitocin. Like I'm, I'm immune to it. Who the fuck is immune to it? Me. And uh, the nurse would come in and he'd be like, um, are you not in pain yet? And I was like, no, I don't feel anything. And he's like, wow, um, I'm gonna double your dose then. You really should be feeling something by now. Cause I was, from one centimeter, I don't think, I think I have dilated about another centimeter after several hours. And he's like, you really should be responding to this faster than that. He's like, I'm gonna up your dose. So finally when he like doubled my dose of Pitocin, then I kind of started feeling it. And I was like, mm, I feel like I have to take a shit. I think I'll go to the restroom and try and take a shit. And then my my husband's like, Sarah, that's your child cramps or whatever. And I was like, are you sure? I, I think I might need to take a shit. And he's like, you might take a shit of a baby in the toilet. He's like, just lay in bed. I was like, all right. So finally an anesthesiologist came in and sat me down and really just told me, he's like, you know what? There's gonna be a point of a return where we cannot administer drugs to you unless there's a cesarean. Um, if you deny me now, if you request drugs later at a certain time, I cannot give them to you. And I was like, okay. And he's like, really think about this. You're tired. Um, this seems like a hard delivery. Do you want to consent to taking an epidural now so you can rest? 
um, I don't know how soon or later this baby's gonna come. And I was like, fuck it, fine. They had me strapped in this bed all all day long. I, could, I couldn't get out of bed rather than to just use the restroom. Um, I, I wanted to do it without drugs, but I just, at the, at the end, I was like, fuck it, give me the epidural. I wanna sleep. So they gave it to me, um, and then I fell asleep. And the next thing I knew, I woke up, and there was like, my doctor came in, and he was like, hey, how's it going? It was like four in the morning or some shit. And he looked at my, my husband, and he's like, is this the father? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you had sex with this man? And I said, yeah. He's like, honey, you don't have sex with men that big. You have sex with midgets, so you have cute little tiny babies and an easy delivery. I was like, my doctor is fucking insane. And I was like, <laughs> that's great. Um, he's like, all right, well, let's have a baby. My water hadn't broke by that time. This was already the next day. It, this kid did not want to come out. I had the slowest fucking labor probably of all time. I don't know. So they broke my water. It, it literally felt like someone popped the water balloon and all this water just gushed out. And I was like, hey, so that's what it's like. to." I mean, everyone did everything for me. My body did nothing naturally. It's like it didn't know what to do. Obviously, you know, my first time being a mother, but you would think you would have some kind of internal instinct that would kick in, right? No, my body was just like, hey, I don't know what's happening. You go ahead and take the wheel, doctor. Um, so, and I'm so glad I did consent to the epidural because uh, I find out later in life that I have really narrow hips. So I can't really birth a child naturally, like the normal way. They had to give me an episiotomy. An episiotomy is when they cut you from your vagina to your anus to widen the hole so the baby can come out. Um, so they did that. They used forceps on me. They used suction cups on my son. And I don't know if it was the forceps or the suction cups, but finally he came out. I remember my mother was standing in front of me, but like way in the corner of the room. And I didn't have my glasses on, but I could see her like wiping her eyes. So I was pretty sure she was crying. <laughs> and later on, she told me, she's like, you don't know what I saw, what they did to you. And I was like, oh, she's like. And then I think I shitted myself too, which happens also when you're trying to push a baby out, which is why they really don't want you to eat when you're pregnant because you're going to be digesting food. I did. My mom said, she's like, I think you shitted yourself. And I was like, <laughs> I don't care. I was asleep. I hope someone cleaned up my poop. I was like, whatever. And then, um, what else? So yeah, I'm sure she saw all kinds of horrific shit come out of me <laughs> when they cut me. Um, so they finally got my son out. And then when they finally pulled him out, I was like, are you serious? They finally pulled him out. And then they like just plopped him on this metal table. And I was like, I, I mean, I didn't have my glasses on, but I was like squinting like, yo, is that a baby? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you just pull a baby out of me? Um, yeah, they did. And for a while, he I didn't see him moving or making a noise. So I was like, hey, hey. It's like, why my baby not making noise? And then they took him to the little table, you know, with the light on it, and they cleaned him up. And then I heard him cry, and I was like, oh, okay, thank God. Um, and then, you know, they stitched me up. And, um, I, I mean, to be honest, my first pregnancy... I think really did a number on my intestines uh, because of it I developed urge incontinence which was pretty bad at one point and it's still kind of bad at this point but um, it's improved I guess throughout the years but I still have urge incontinence um, I even got as far as to almost getting Botox injections in my bladder so I could control it but I opted out of that I was like this shit's getting too crazy like like whatever you know um, I can live with it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, so yeah, my first pregnancy definitely jumbled up my intestines, did a number on me. Fucking hated it. Um, and then my second pregnancy, so I was 19, so I, I really didn't want to have children. In fact, my first pregnancy, I did ask my doctor, I was like, can you please tie my tubes? I don't want any more children. And I was, of course, 20 at this point, and my doctor's like, no, 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 you're too young, I'm not gonna tie your tubes. See, this is when they do that, that shit, like they think they know better than you. But anyways, they didn't. Uh, lo and behold, many years later, like seven years later, when I was 27, I accidentally got pregnant again with my second son. Um, six months prior to that, I had had a Paragard, which is the copper 
IUD, which is an implant that they put in your uterus. And it's, you know, it's a birth control that's supposed to last for like 10 years. So technically if it had worked, I would have barely had it being taken out next year because I had wanted it implanted in 2009. That only lasted me three years and then my body rejected it and it spat it out. Like it literally spat it out when I had um, a gynecologist appointment. She looked at me and she's like, I can see it coming out of your cervix. And I was like, are you serious? She's like, I have to take it out. I can't leave it in there. And I was like, oh God, okay. So she pulled it out, it was very painful. And she's like, because your body rejected it, we have to wait six months. I cannot re-implant one right away. I have to give you six months for your uterus to heal. And I was like, are you serious? She's like, do you want any other birth control in the meantime? And like, I don't know, for some reason with my insurance, like if I had gotten the pill, I would get one month supply right away and then the next supplies I'd have to order it from the insurance like it was really really weird and inconvenient and I'm really lazy so I couldn't do that um the Nuva ring wasn't covered so that would be 50 bucks a month like there were there were, there was just some issues with my insurance so I but again I was lazy and I was like well let's see if I can ride this six months out and if I get pregnant I get pregnant if I don't excellent I'll be back in this office so around before the six month period came up I got pregnant um and I didn't want to be I was very ashamed even you know I don't know what it is being a young mother I even as and as an adult like almost in your 30s like I felt so ashamed that I got pregnant again out of my, my control and um so I remember my husband wanted another kid and I really tried my best not to get pregnant um and and finally, like I admitted to him, like I I did a pregnancy test, and sure enough, I was pregnant. And I remember he was playing video games, and I was like, "Hey, dude, I'm pregnant," and he's just like, and I was like, because nah. I kind of knew what I was in store for. I was like, "I'm gonna gain another thirty pounds. I'm going to fucking die. Like I can't be that heavy." Um, but I mean, this odd enough, this last pregnancy, I only gained five pounds, so I was still back to my. I guess normal weight that I had kind of been used to up until that point so that was good I was just like so ashamed again I didn't want any more children but I was like whatever at least now I know for sure if I ask to get my tubes tied they will be tied because I'm old enough and this will be my second child so sure enough they did but I mean like again going back to the part with when I'm pregnant no one gives a shit it's not like these wonderful Facebook moments like nobody really gives a shit when I'm fucking pregnant um so I had told my stepdad I was like because up until then I th I was telling them I think I'm pregnant but I'm not sure yet and they're like okay I hope it's a girl because like everyone in my family has boys like literally we don't have any girls and every time someone's pregnant it's a boy I don't know what it is but I told him I told my stepdad and he was like he's like I knew it that's great and then he walked off and I was like okay and then I think I told my mom and she's like that's nice Miha. I hope it's a girl like aren't you supposed to cry or something like these grandparents on Facebook like I don't um I don't remember what my grandmother said it was probably something like not really overly enthusiastic and then I don't remember what my husband's parents said again it probably wasn't overly enthusiastic everyone was just like that's nice like hey I got a new car hey that's great hey I'm pregnant that's nice that's pretty much how everyone reacts to my pregnancies um so yeah with my second child uh, since at that point I was still at the same clinic with the same nurse practitioner and doctors doctor group uh, you know they still had my file and they're like okay well this next pregnancy definitely you're gonna have to have a cesarean because um, I don't think your birth canal or your hips could take having another child naturally um, so you're gonna have to cesarean so I had my cesarean scheduled I went through my whole pregnancy you know it was fine the only thing is like I noticed my back would give out a lot more like if I try to clean the house a lot by the end of the night my back would be like on fire like it would it was hurting so when I would go to work the next day even though like I sat in my chair a lot I would be super 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 uncomfortable in pain um it was it was a different pregnancy just I just I could feel it a little more wear and tear on my body um and then but just, and then of course with both pregnancies I never got nauseous or anything 
the only time I would get nauseous is if I took my prenatal vitamins without having food first, they would immediately make me throw up. And that happened to me quite a few times. I would forget to eat and I'd take them and I would just vomit it all up. It was so And then I had my second son via cesarean. It was all planned. So at least that was nice. At least he was on time, unlike my other son who just didn't want to come out. That, that went all right. Um, and I had, uh, again, Except with this pregnancy, I had, you know, a little more access to YouTube. So I would watch some pretty fucked up shit about pregnant women. I would watch a lot of stillbirths, a lot of, uh, you know, things like that. Like babies that would die or be premature and they would pass away. So I was really setting myself up for a whole lot of worries before I had my second son. And I don't know why, like, I just started getting obsessed with stillbirths and stuff like that um so i i had him via cesarean and i remember i told my doctor while she was like she had me open and they had like my uterus out you know like they pull your guts out when you're having cesarean. they're like oh let me let me get your intestines out let me clean out this 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 uterus i need to clean it um and i was like hey are, are you tying my tubes now she's like yes we're tying your tubes and i was like all right and then I remember I told my husband, because they when you have a cesarean, like you're like this on a like a tea table and you're all numb from the waist down and they have like a sheet in front of you so you can't see over and see them cutting open your guts and pulling out a baby. So I told my husband, I was like, hey man, um, don't look over the sheet because you won't like what you see. What does my husband do? He gets up and looks over the sheet and he comes back down. And he's like, his, his face is pale, right? Like the color just completely goes out. And he's like, I, I looked over the sheet and I said, what did you learn? And he was all, I was like, I told you not to look over the sheet. I go, I was like, how are my insides? And he was just like, shut up. <laughs> I told him, don't look over the sheets. You'll regret it. Anyways, he didn't quite pass out and then they pulled my son out and he was crying immediately and it was very nice and I did get kind of teary eyed because I was like, oh my God, I've waited nine months to meet you and I'm not pregnant anymore. I was like, yay. He was cute though. Super cute. Um, I will say with the cesarean, that was another kind of hell because... Since they numb you from the waist down, that shuts down all your digestive system and like everything down there shuts down, right? So as you're trying to like get the drugs out of your system, you have a very hard time pooping the next day, passing gas, just like, burp, like anything just to get burp or waste out is completely shut down. So I didn't sleep for 24 hours straight. It was hell on earth. Um, I couldn't poop I couldn't I mean like I said like like you think oh that sounds great no honestly when you can't pass gas or poop it is excruciating pain I'd say excruciating is is maybe an understatement uh, compared to what I experienced um the nurses were like okay take prune juice we'll give you a laxative I'll order a suppository for you and this one nurse, she was so cool. Both of my nurses were like Caribbean ladies, but one nurse, she was the shit. I loved her so much. She was like, okay, well, I'm going to go home for my shift. I already ordered a suppository for you because up until that point, like I was, I remember there would be like gas in my system that wanted to come out and I would see it in my stomach since I didn't have muscle control to pass gas or to even go number two, it would bubble in my stomach and I could see peaks forming. On, the, on my skin, like where my stomach and intestines were, like little peaks would form because the gas couldn't escape. You have no idea how painful that is. It is absolute hell on earth. And the next nurse that came in, my, the nurse prior, mind you, she had already ordered the suppository. And it's not like they have to go get it from some uh, obscure pharmacy in the corner of, of the city. You know, it's there. They're just like, these are the orders for the next nurse. Please give her a suppository. And if you don't know what a suppository is, it's like a little pill stick thing that they shove up your ass so that way you can go number two if you're severely, severely constipated. So I was like, wow, I, I've never had something shoved up my ass, but I am so looking forward to the suppository because that's how bad I wanted to go number two, but I couldn't, right? Like, it's crazy. And for some reason, I don't know what the hell's wrong with this nurse. 
she did not want to do that for me. She was like, oh no, warm up some prune juice and blah, 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 blah. Well, she didn't want to give me the suppository. She's like, oh, I'll check on it. I'll check on it. I'm pretty sure this lady has a thing against asses because maybe she don't want to go near mine, but I can only imagine what she's doing with her other patients that are in pain that need that kind of relief. She wasn't giving it to them, and I did report her to the hospital uh, twice, especially because after you have a hospital stay, their concierge like calls you back and asks you for like feedback, like a, re like a review, like a Yelp review. Well, I gave a very negative review about that one nurse. So anyway, the next, I couldn't sleep at all. 24 hours I'm in so much pain sleep is damn near impossible so my nurse the same one comes back in the morning and she comes in all bubbly hey how did it go did you sleep well and I have no color in my face I have dark bags I'm fucking dying right and I told her I haven't slept a wink I'm in so much pain I can't go number two I can't pass gas and then she looks at me like puzzled like I, I don't understand I ordered a suppository and I go the nurse kept checking on it and she never gave it to me. Like she didn't know what was going on. And she's like, okay, I'll be right back. So she goes and gets it. It takes her less than 10 seconds. She's like, pull your pants down. Um, you know, she puts her glove on. She puts it up less than 10 seconds. And she's like, I don't know why that nurse didn't give it to you. Like she, like, you know, she wanted to, to vent and rant about maybe why she was pissed at this nurse. But obviously she was a professional, so she didn't. So anyway, shortly after that, it did work. And then finally I had some relief and I didn't feel like fucking committing suicide anymore. So that, that was my two pregnancy stories. Um, one, I fucking hate being pregnant. You're not glowing. For most people, I, I, what is glowing? I don't give a shit if my body's making another life. I'm not fucking glowing. I feel miserable, but I put up with it because yeah, it's my baby, right? And don't think for a second, oh, she doesn't love her children. I do love my children. I just fucking hate being pregnant. If I could have them some way without baking them in an oven that the oven is in me, like, I would totally would. But that's not how it, happened, how, how it goes. Um, no one gives a shit when I'm pregnant. And, uh, yeah, all pregnancies, both my pregnancies were pretty fucking bad and they left me pretty mangled. Um, so, yeah. That's my pregnancy story. How about yours? Sorry. I know this is like so pessimistic. There's nothing beautiful about it. The only thing beautiful was when I was able to come home and finally be with my baby and I could crap and piss like a normal person and I could walk around my house and uh, yeah, and I could sleep. So yeah, that's my pregnancy, pregnancy stories. I'm sticking to them. That's my story time. Have a lovely night and...